Welcome to the Glaze Lecture. We're going to talk about glaze. Glaze is really just a special type of glass. Glass is mainly made of silica. And the glass that's in your, that you know everywhere is made of just silica and flux. The silica melts at a high temperature, melting point Fahrenheit. The flux is usually have a melting point between 14 and 15 Fahrenheit. Put the two together and you can make something called glass. If you want to make glaze, you have to have a third ingredient, which is aluminum. Aluminum melts at a higher temperature than um, silica. So what it does is when you add it to the mix of silica and flux, it makes a glass that is um, thick and viscous and it doesn't flow. So what happens is that when, when the glaze melts on the side of your, of your ceramic piece, it doesn't run off of the, off of the, off of the pot and onto the floor and it kills you. So silica and alumina and flux, that's what makes up the glaze. So all glaze formulas have, have ingredients that have all three of those of those those elements. And the reason why we have to do that is that, as I said, silica melts at 3,400 degrees. Our kilns, when we fire them, we fire, this is the list of cones. This is cone 10, there's cone 05, there's cone 06, there's 013 and 022, which is the lowest cone. Normal high temperature firing is done at 10, which is 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit. We fire our glazes at cone 6, which is 2,210 approximately, our glaze temperature. 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit. Our Raku, our Bisque, our Mayalica, and our earthenware are all fired somewhere between 05 and 04, which is 1886 to 18. 41 Fahrenheit. So you can see if you're only going to 2200 and you're trying to melt something that is a combination of silica and alumina, the melting temperature for silica is 3400, the melting temperature for alumina is 3800, then you have to add flux to lower the temperature. Here are three glazes that are from our glaze book. You, when you do your glaze test, you will be using one of these glaze formulas. Uh, I will assign the glaze test. Um, so let's look at these three glazes here. Um, this is blue black, this is blue cash, and this is transparent or web red. Now, let's look at what's in Almost all glazes are not made up of pure silica, alumina, or flux. Uh, if we could go into the, if we could go into the uh, glaze room and just find the silica, the alumina, and flux and mix them all together, that would be simple. But we use minerals. We use minerals that are refined out of the ground that have odd names. They're not called silica, alumina, or flux. They're called feldspars and clays and whiting and grossly borate, they all have these weird names that don't have anything to do with chemistry. So for example, feldspars, Custer feldspar. We call it Custer feldspar because uh, it's, from the Custer, it's from the Custer Mining Company. Um, so Custer feldspar has a Kaolin has alumina. Okay, so there's a source of alumina. Custer feldspar also has silica. Kaolin has silica. Gersley borate, named after a man named Gersley, who discovered this borate, so it's Gersley's borate. These two are fluxes.
but in addition to feldspars contain silica and alumina, but they also contain fluxes. So feldspars have silica, alumina, and flux in them. And in theory, they could be a glaze. But they actually wouldn't be a very melt good glaze because their melting point is around 2,700 degrees. So a feldspar by itself could be used as a glaze if you were firing way above cone 10 and you didn't mind having a glaze that kind of looked goopy and cloudy and not a very nice glaze. So Custer feldspar is sort of like a not very good glaze that's been modified with ghostly borate and whiting and kaolin to make it into a nice glaze, blue-black. Now, we call that glaze blue-black, but all of these glazes that are listed here, the blue-black and the Raymond Blake ash and the transparent green. If you look above this line here, this is the base. So, although we call this the blue-black glaze, it's not blue-black until you add the colors. So all of these formulas that you see, if you go above the line where it says base, all you're getting is a clear or milk and clear uh, glass that sticks to the side of your pot. The thing that gives it the color is the colors. Uh, so for the for, for blue-black, here's where chemistry Blue-black, we actually add um, um, metal oxides. We add 4%, uh, 4.1% copper carbonate, 4.1% manganese dioxide, and 2% cobalt carbonate. That's what makes blue-black blue-black. If you had blue-black, and you, if, you had, if you mixed up this base and didn't add these colorants, you just have a clear glaze. And what you're going to be doing for your tests is that you're going to be mixing up this base we're going to mix up one batch that has all of the colorants. And then you're going to mix up another batch that has a different set of colorants that are your choice. And um, we're going to give you some more information on, your, on the color choices. Your take-home test that you're doing, one of your take-home tests is, is, is asking, tell, uh, tell me what colorants produce what colors. So this is all available in your test. Let's look at Leyland fake ash because it has something else in it that's very interesting. Um, so let's look for the. Um, here's the feldspar right here. So we know that the feldspar has silica. Flux. And these two ingredients, the dolomite, that's a flux. And the whiting, that's a flux. The two ball the two clays that we have in the clays are OM4 ball clay and bentonite. Now this is another thing that is going to be something that you have to learn. How things are named in glaze chemistry is totally random. So for example, OM4 ball clay is old line number four ball clay. And so you always see it listed as OM number four. Sometimes they don't even tell you ball clay. Sometimes they just say ball clay. But OM number four ball clay is a clay. So it has alumina and silica. Bentonite. Bentonite is basically, we call it bentonite, which means it's a mineral, but it's actually a clay. So, 
that is Aluminum. And silica. Well, there are, here are our basic ingredients so far. We know that dolomite is a flux. We know that whiting is a flux. We know that feldspar is a flux. It has a, it's a source of aluminum and a source of silica. But, uh, but also, so it's a complete glaze, but not the glaze of one. We've added a little ball clay here, so that's aluminum and silica. Flint is always silica. You'll see it expressed as, sil as flint. Sometimes it will be expressed as silica. It's the same thing. What's left here is the ferrofrit. Now, ferrofrit, this is on one of your take home tests. What is a frit? A frit is a combination of glaze ingredients that have been combined and melted and then ground back down into powder. So what a, what a frit is really is, is basically it's a glaze. But it's a glaze um, here we're using it. It's, it's a glaze that um, has a melting point of um, Melting point of around 1500. So you can see, even though it's a complete glaze, in this formula, we're using it as a flux because it melts at a lower point than, than, the, than, the, than what we want, than we want the glaze to melt at. We want these glazes to melt at roughly. So when you see a frit in a glaze, you can you can assume that it's that it's working as a flux. So this is alumina. Silica. There are some glaze formulas that only have frit and feldspar and clay. Okay, so Lehman fake ash. Um, Lehman fake ash, again, is by itself, from, from this line up, is just a kind of a milky, milky white, uh, semi-matte glass that sits on the top of your pot. It has no color. But the Lehman fake ash glass glaze that we have in the studio is green, and that comes from the copper carbonate. 2% CuCO3, copper carbonate, that's the color. You will all be doing glaze tests, and I will assign you a base, and I will ask you to reproduce the glaze in a 100 gram formula, and then I will ask you to take that base, change the colorant, and make another glaze. So that will be the glaze test that you have to do. We're going to have a demo on that. There is a step-by-step -step, uh, paper on doing that. Um, and we'll talk about that in another lecture. So just for throw a little wrinkle in it just so you understand how what can happen. Let's look at this last glaze. This is called transparent green or web red. Transparent green is the color that this glaze is when it's fired in the electric kilns in oxidation. But when this kiln, when this glaze is fired in reduction, um, in the gas kiln, it becomes red. Nothing else changes. So, this glaze is uh, very straightforward here. You know that um, we already know that whiting is a flux. We know that Gillespie borate is a flux. We know that flint is silica, SiO2, SiO2. 
and we know that nephsi is silica. Silica. This is a very, but what makes this glaze, gives this glaze color is an incredibly small amount of copper oxide combined with even smaller amounts of, gla of, of, colors, of colorants that modify the copper oxide. So really pay attention to the copper oxide. This is 0.39% copper, I mean copper carbonate. Um, 0.39% copper carbonate will make this glaze green in the electric fire and will make it red in the reduction fire. And remember, again, this glaze formula above this line is, is a clear glaze. These are the colorants, and that's what makes it green or red. Now, after you've looked at this video, and while you're looking at this video, if you have any questions, you should write them down. And um, when, we, uh, when we do our Zoom meetings, uh, bring up these issues so that I can clarify whatever I've misspoke on or uh, misstated on. Uh, thank you very much.